League matches have proven to be the best ways for football players to show what they know. But can the same be said for youth players? And can China produce the same level of play as seen in Europe? The administrators here seem to think so. Right now, we're in the trophy room of the Shandong Lunan Taishan Youth Football Club, a monument to the school's success. In this episode, we'll talk about how league matches might be able to improve the level of play in the youth football leagues here in China. We held the first Weifang Cup in 2006. It's been an annual event for the past eight years. Our goal in conducting this match is to invite all the high-level youth training teams to China and let our players and coaches see the level of overseas teams without having to go abroad. Many teams, including our national youth team, will compete in the Weifang Cup. More and more teams from abroad, including Ajax, VfL Wolfsburg, Club Atletico River Plate and Sao Paulo Football Club, all come to China to take part in matches, where they've shown high-level competitive skills. In addition to youth league matches from the world's professional clubs, there are also different kinds of league matches for amateur youth players that are divided up by district, county, province, or the entire country. In Beijing, there is a school that not only attends these matches, but holds school league matches of their own. We had a league match called the Ma Yuehan Football League match, and the young players represent 42 different countries by wearing different kinds of clothes. It's kind of like a mini World Cup. Now the league match has become a tradition which is held every year. All right, good job guys, good job. Get the ball, get the ball. There you go, there you go. Good job. There are all different kinds of matches in China, but are they the right kind of matches? We spoke to some scholars who think that intense competition at too young an age can actually have a negative impact. Children entering high school level competition are too young and would have a negative impact on the perception of the sport. You can't have large scale matches in primary school. We should focus on making football popular and fun. When it comes to junior high school, there should be a transition into professional style play. And in senior high school, you could start to organize large scale and intense competitions. Things are the same in Japan. They won't promote junior high school matches very hard. As the department in charge of youth training, the education system has unveiled a four-stage league matches plan for the youth in China. In primary school, matches should be mostly city or county-wide. We should focus more on the matches inside the school, like friendly matches between classes, using these matches to motivate children's passion in football. We should never organize matches on the province or country-wide level. When it comes to junior high school, there is the opportunity for higher intensity matches. We could organize province matches. Countrywide matches should only be available for those in senior high school or university. But every coin has two sides, and the same can be said about youth league matches. On one hand, matches can show how the coaches and players train and the results of their training. On the other hand, China's focus on results can lead to many problems. There's a lot of cheating. And one of those that I remember is the Middle School Girls World Cup. So it's an amateur World Cup tournament for football teams at girls' schools. And China was invited to take part in this tournament. It's a few years ago now. So the team that they took to that competition was not the team from that girls' school. It was the under-16 national girls' team, the best players in the whole of China, who were pretending to play for that school. That's how bad it has got at the junior level. We have done many things looking for quick success and instant benefits. Lying about age is a very common occurrence and hasn't been addressed for many years, but it seems like the problem has eased a bit. When we use players with the correct age to compete, we could hardly beat Brunei or Vietnam. Another thing is that in order to have good results in matches, we use training methods made for adults. We show the youngsters all the techniques at a very young age in order for them to use all the pragmatic techniques in the games and using the stronger kid to score and win. This is precisely what we should avoid during training. 
Ojo. The youth training system in Europe pays very close attention to the matches. Without matches, you can't test your training methods, and there will be very little talent to come out of it. But you can't use match results as the only index to measure your training method. The youth league match should provide a platform for the youngsters. At this point, we are doing not very well. When there is a match, we would want to win that by lowering the amount of time they have to study, to give the players more practice time and teach them techniques that they really shouldn't learn. This kind of training just leads to temporary champions and their success won't last. The idea of match-oriented training is a concept understood by coaches around the world. But the best coaches know that a match is the perfect time to test their system and to find any flaws. A perfect example of this is Japan, whose recent success has become obvious to all. So how does Japan set up its youth league? The All Japan High School Soccer Tournament starts even earlier than the Japanese Football Association. Every year there is an annual nationwide high school football tournament, and then there is a two-week tournament stage with 48 teams from December to January competing in the National Olympic Stadium. Around 4,195 schools will compete for the 48 spots to enter into the final, which is a very amazing number. When it comes to the university, there will be different league matches in all nine regions of Japan, and there will be a nationwide championship match and one nationwide league match every year. Basically, every school has a football team that participates in one of these leagues. There is a long way to go for China to optimize its youth match system, but with a new resurgence in interest in the sport, people's confidence in football has achieved a record high. In the next episode, we'll take a peek into the future of China's youth football.